This screencast will demonstrate some of the basic tools of the OSIRIS phylogenetics package, which is implemented within Galaxy, the Galaxy Bioinformatics package. So this screencast in particular shows just some of the basic features for conducting multi-gene phylogenetic analysis. So what we'll do is use data from this paper, which is called Dispersal Between Shallow and Abyssal Seas and Evolutionary Loss and Regain of Compound Eyes in Cylindra Leboridid Ostracods, etc. And here's the data table. This was published in 2012 in Systematic Biology. So I have all the data from that paper, all the molecular data from that paper, in a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet has four different columns, and we call this PHYTAB format. And this is useful within OSIRIS because it allows us to do multi-gene analyses all at one time and keep all the data within one file. So the first column is the species name. Second column is the gene name. Third column is the unique accession number for each gene. And the fourth column is the sequence. So these can be DNA sequences, as in this case, or they can be protein sequences. And uh, this is all the data that I showed you a minute ago on uh, this table right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll copy these data just in the tabular format, which Excel uses. You can see there's 104 sequences from different species. There's four different genes here. So I'm just going to copy this so that I can upload it into Galaxy. And so I have here on the OSIRIS demo server, which is galaxy-dev.cnsi.ucsb slash OSIRIS. And we'll go over here under Get Data, and we'll do Upload File. So I'm pasting those data in, and then I will hit Execute. I've already named this history over here, OSIRIS phytab to trees workflow. So I'm going to actually use a workflow that I've already prepared to generate phylogenetic trees from these data. So now we can have a look here using this eye, and you can see the same data set here with this phytab format, what we call phytab format, first column species, second column gene name, third column accession number, fourth column sequence. If I want to, I can rename this by clicking on the pencil here, edit attributes, and I will call this cylindro liberated data. Then click save, and now that name appears in the history. So I can select other tools to analyze over here, other OSIRIS tools, or I can select a workflow. Before I select that workflow, I'll show you what it looks like. So up on the different tabs up at the top here, I will click on Workflow, and I have this one here, OSIRIS Workflow, Multiple Genes in PhyTab to Phylogenies. So I'm going to do Edit to be able to view it. So what this tool does is it allows us to input a data set. That's the PhyTab data set that I just showed you. This passes that data into a tool called PhyTab Muscle. So Muscle is a sequence alignment tool. And the nice thing about this is that even though we have four genes in this data set, PhyTab Muscle will parse those genes out and align them separately. So each gene will be al aligned separately. So usually tools like Muscle only take one gene family at a time, but we've written multiple different PhyTab tools to uh, parse or to use multiple genes or gene families all at the same time. That then gets um, ported into the output of PhyTab Muscle. The aligned data gets ported into a tool called Remove PhyTab Dupes. And what that is is it removes any duplicates from the data file. So if we had uh, population data that we weren't aware of, like multiple sequences from multiple of the same sequences from the same species, Remove PhyTab Dupes removes that. Next, the workflow will separate and go into two different directions. So first, it will put the output of remove PhyTab dupes into PhyTab RaxML. So what this does, it's another PhyTab tool, and it implements RaxML. And that is a tool for generating a maximum likelihood phylogeny separately for each of the genes within the data set. So we get a gene tree for each of the different genes, all with one tool. Then that gets passed out into a tool called tab to trees and now this, the output of PhyTab RaxML is multiple different gene trees, and tab to trees will generate a graphic for each of those gene trees in a book that is within a PDF, and I'll show you the results of that after we run this. So, uh, remove PhyTab dupes makes a gene tree for each separate gene, but it also 
splits off here and goes into Phyla Catenator, and Phyla Catenator concatenates the data based on species and gene and into a single data set. And then the out file here gets passed into RaxML, and RaxML then generates a maximum likelihood phylogenetic tree based on um, the concatenated data. Then the output of that, we put the best tree into this tool called Tree Vector, which visualizes the, uh, the concatenated phylogenetic tree. So that's the workflow that we're going to run. I'll go back to Analyze Data, and we have our history here with our data set in the history. So I will click on Workflows here, and now I want to choose this one, OSIRIS Workflow Multiple Genes in PhiTab to Phylogenies. That's the, two, the, uh, that's the workflow I just showed you. And here's our data set that we need, which is a PhiTab multi-gene file. That's what it's asking for. And uh, all these different tools that I showed you. And here I have allowed the outgroup to be specified for the RaxML run. In this case, it's a species called Manawa stacei, which I will put in there. And then we can click Run Workflow. So what this will do is take that data set and run it through the workflow that I just showed you. And you can see here that when it turns yellow, it means that tool is running. So right now we're aligning within Muscle all four different genes. And I can show you clicking on this tool and then clicking the this circle arrow that is allow, would allow me to rerun this data. Uh, here's the Muscle tool, what it looks like. It takes in the sequence data and outputs the aligned sequence data. So we can have a look uh, at the results here by clicking on the eye, and we can see that uh, these genes are aligned. So 18S is at the top here. We have a fragment of 28S EEMM. We have 28S uh, fragment called VX. And these are aligned um, separately within each gene family. And we can have a look at that over here all the way at the end of this. We can see that the 18S sequences up at the top are longer than the 28S sequences down here. And these are aligned even though they don't all start at exactly the same place, so they're not exactly lining up. Or this is, I guess this is actually a proportional font here, so they're not all the same width for each character. So Muscle then aligns it. As I said, we then go into this tool called uh, Remove PhiTab Dupes, and that gives us unique sequences, which are shown here, but also gives us duplicated sequences. So it gives us two different files within our history. In this case, there were no duplicated sequences, so duplicated PhiTab lines is empty. Um, so next, I said it runs PhiTab RaxML, and we can see the standard out, uh, the, 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 um, the output of RaxML for each of the different runs, and you can see uh, all the output that RaxML gave us, and this is for each of the five, uh, sorry, four different genes, and then there are results for these, um, each of the four different genes. So we have 16S, 18S, and 228S fragments. So this is a tabular format, so it's a one column with the name of the gene family and one column with the Newick phylogeny. So you can see um, there's four different phylogenies, there's different numbers of species in each of these, and so there's four different trees here. And then we can use the output of that, which is the output of PhiTab RaxML, and put that into tab to trees. So tab to trees was where the program uh, makes a PDF book, a uh, book of the different gene trees. So we have the 16S tree shown here. So if, in this case, if we wanted to examine each gene tree separately, that's what we can do here. So we have 16S, we have our 18S tree, and we have one 28S region, and we have another 28S region. So uh, let me show you if, what it looks like to if we were to run tab to trees. And again, all these different tools we can choose over here. So tab to trees is under Phylographics right over here. So we can do tab to trees. And we can see we have different options here. So I had midpoint rooting chosen. So all those trees were midpoint rooted in this book of PDFs. We could also download this data and get it to our local machine. So we can download this PDF by just clicking on this disk here, which is in uh, this area of the history. So that's um, PhiTab RaxML. And then in addition, we ran through the, the data through Phylocatenator, and that is a tool that concatenates the different um, genes into a single file, and it fills in the missing data with question marks, 
as you can see here. So Arcus Ebola, this species, is missing the first gene, and so it fills that in with question marks, so it allows it to have a, um, a single Raxamel file here. So we have 36 different species, 4,915 different characters. Now one thing that um, Phylocatenator also does, if we click on the eye of this HTML table, it produces a summary of the species that we have in our data set and the genes that we have in our data set. So these columns are genes, and we have 16S, 18S, 228S regions, and the columns are different species. Those that are shaded in black are cases where we have that combination of species and gene, and those that are shown in white are where we don't have those data. Now if we were to show what it looks like to run Phylocatenator as a tool by itself, which we could always do here, um, we can see there's a few different options. We, in this case, um, I didn't require any minimum number of genes per species, but we can filter or we can titrate, we call it in our lab titrating, the data set um, by forcing the data set to have more and more genes per species or more and more species per gene, and we can fill in those different values here. We can also force a minimum length of a particular aligned gene family. So that's the minimum number of amino acids or the minimum number of DNA sequences that must be present for a gene to be included. We can also put a text list of um, species here. So if we only wanted to analyze 10 of our species or a subset of our species, we can give it a list in a text file and pass that into the tool. We can also generate a different model uh, for the different uh, gene partitions. And this is also explained down here in the help. But we can uh, use a different model for each of our gene partitions. So this allows us to use mixed data types, um, proteins, DNA, uh, even morphological data. So the way, uh, the way that I ran the tool here, I didn't use um, separate models. And so what that results in, as you can see on that HTML table that I showed you, is that the default then is the GTR model. So each of these uses uh, uh, specifies in the partition file a GTR model. And so you can see here, this is our partition file, which if we had different data types would, would be um, illustrated here, but we just have the one different data type, which is DNA in the GTR model. So that's Phylocatenator, and then what we can do is pass the Phylocatenator data, or the results of Phylocatenator, into RaxML. And so that's what was done in our history up here in our workflow. Um, we passed Phylocatenator into RaxML. So we can show you um, the RaxML tool. And so we have to choose our data file. Here's our outgroup, which we specified in the uh, workflow uh, when we ran the workflow. We can check that we want to add the gamma model of rate heterogeneity. If we had protein sequences, we could check that. If we wanted to estimate the proportion of invariant sites, we could check that. We can do a number of bootstrap replications. I only did 10 here just for speed's sake. And then we can click whether or not we want to also, in addition to the bootstrapping, search for the maximum likelihood tree here. And we can give each different RaxML run a name, which shows up in the history. So I called this ML for maximum likelihood, concat for concatenated. So the ML concat shows up over on the right here in the history. Now we can see then uh, we have results from our RaxML analysis. This is the phylogeny in NUIC format. We could copy this out and paste it into a different program like FigTree to visualize the phylogeny. We also have a simple uh, tool called TreeVector to visualize the output of our RaxML concatenated um, analysis. And so that this is the phylogeny here. You can see we had specified our outgroup Manawastaceae, which is uh, showing as the outgroup here in this rooted tree. And uh, we get these relationships for the molecular data from our cylindrical elaborated data set. So this should show you some of the basics of the things you can do with multi-gene analyses within OSIRIS. And of course, um, we are now at the stage in phylogenetic analyses when we often have many, many more hundreds or thousands of uh, gene families. And uh, we can use these tools for those types of analyses as well. And some of the things that I didn't discuss were ortholog uh, identification, but I will try and do that in a different screencast. So I'll end there, but hopefully that gives you some of uh, the basics on how you can do multi-gene phylogenetic analyses within OSIRIS, which is a phylogenetics uh, set of phylogenetics rules for the galaxy bioinformatics.